okay so good evening everyone so it's nice to have everyone here so uh, like currently i'm working as a data scientist in dao centric and i'm working in applied research team here apart from that i'm also working on several other projects uh, apart from the applied research team and uh, this dao centric is a supply chain management domain company in which we focus on giving the real time uh, expertise and like to our client the real time expertise so basically that main uh, reason behind taking this call is to like uh, what happened uh, recently in november 2022 that my, one of my notebook got uh, nominated for kagal ml research spotlight and this notebook is based on the paper which i have published earlier while i, I was at jnu and uh, yeah so basically what happens ki um, i should start with my talk now like what is the behind what is the reason behind this talk why why i am giving a presentation over it because i think like the real time application is yet to achieve in this domain and like most of the people in which are coming from this domain don't have a much uh, knowledge and like they are not able to apply the transfer learning technique in such a way that they can achieve it in a real time environment or it, like while I, I was in canary i was also facing the similar kind of issues and when i tried to apply i faced many pro problems such as like uh, the data collection is the main problem how we are applying it to the real time application all these things i will talk in uh, today's session Mm, now let's move to the next section so the thing is ki <coughs> uh, before going to through this presentation what i will show uh, for the motivation purpose is that i will be showing you how to deploy uh, uh, this uh, into a real time application in a hugging face environment just one second so i have created a whole space and i will show you how i can do that in a uh, kaggle environment and i can push it to the hugging face repo di directly from there so the current space is some looks something like this so what happens ki what happens ki like uh, in the medical Always domain you have not shared your screen only your video is visible my screen is vis not visible just give me a second is it now visible yeah okay so i was talking ki i was uh, i was talking ki i will i will show how to do that in a kaggle environment how to train our own model and i will go through the code purpose i will not talk much theoretical and like i will talk mostly the coding part and how to like do the real time deployment because i feel that like the theory we can get to know the theory part somewhere on the youtube or some other place but uh, the practical demonstration and how to apply it in real time is uh, very much important so uh, this uh, kaggle notebook what it does is that it will automatically push the code and push the model and everything into uh, uh, into a hugging face demo which we can directly use to uh, assign and like do the practical implementation and i will come to the practical implementation after this so the thing is ki what happens in uh, nlp domain is that uh, like in in the biomedical nlp domain uh, we have a lot of uh, textual data and that data is in millions and billions of article size and uh, uh, what happens ki like in 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 real time uh, those articles has to be labeled so that that can be indexed that can be fetched easily and uh, basically to help to the person who are like uh, trying to fetch the data from the whole th this much big repo 
so uh, transfer learning is a technique which helps in a very efficient way and which can which can be improved further and uh, uh, what i did was ki i was working on this problem for past 2 to 3 years and uh, recently i submitted uh, this notebook in one of the kagal ml research spotlight award and there this notebook got selected and i was the uh, special award winner in that so uh, let's start with the presentation and then i will move to the kaggle uh, where uh, i will show how the coding and everything works and then i will show a demonstration live demonstration how the model is taking the data and the labels which it is assigning to it so introduction <coughs> So uh, to in this presentation, like in this talk, the mm, table of contents are uh, introduction, background, and then the data set description, and then when how to map uh, this problem of uh, BioAsk uh, into a multi-label classification problem, and then what are the challenges which I faced, the, then the flow diagram, how everything is going, and then I will talk a little bit about transformer model and the performance issues, but I will not talk much theory about the transformer and the internal mechanism and how the pre-training of it works because uh, that would not be efficient and we, I, we cannot like cover this in this much time duration. And then I will show the experiment and result with a code demonstration and then the conclusion of it. So, <clears throat> Uh, why are we talking about uh, uh, this transfer learning? What is this transfer learning and how it came into picture? So the main thing started uh, like uh, when we have do not we, we do not have sufficient labor labels uh, which we have to assign to a particular domain or particular like say for example medical document we have to assign the label to to the document. So we don't have uh, like much of the uh, prior knowledge. So uh, that's when this transfer learning uh, comes into picture and traditional machine learning model. We have to train them traditional machine learning model. Uh, let's say, for example, XGBoot or XGBoost or random forest or this kind of model does not work in such a way that the transfer learning model such as BioBird, ExcelNet, Robert, uh, this kind of model works in a better way and, and I'm going to show you in today's talk is that how we can assign a labels to to the document in a very efficient way and in a very simpler way. So I have utilized uh, but for sequence classification model. I have also made the code in such a way that it can be applied to Roberta for sequence classification or ExcelNet for sequence classification model. Just we have to change some few parameters which I will show in the Kaggle notebook itself. So I have talked mostly about the big model and why why this transfer learning helps in a better way because we have something called of uh, known as the knowledge transfer which works in a better way and uh, the le learning mechanism here uh, is that we have a pre-trained model which is present behind which are pre-trained model and we just has to have, have to select those model and we have to fine tune it to our own task. So uh, a lot of people I think are not from the NLP, NLP background and uh, I should be explaining a bit about pre-trained model and why this that that is also happening and how it is helping helping in a domain specific uh, domain specific task. So the main thing is that uh, uh, what is happening uh, we have something called a self attention mechanism which plays a very important role so self attention att attention mechanism is a very important here in in the transfer learning technique because mm, the whole structure is like uh, based on that only so uh, when i uh, if i will say it in layman language what is the uh, self attention mechanism so if i will uh, say that OS is going to the market. OK, so the term OS is going to the like it, it will not assign a fixed 
uh, kind of a numerical representation because we all know that we cannot pass the text directly to the model. So we have to convert it to a numerical representation. But previously before transfer learning technique, what was happening was like say for example in what to wear or in other some similar model, what was happening uh, the model was not uh, uh, assigning a different uh, like the context embedding. So this context and embedding plays a very important role here and that's why we are able to like the model is able to like work in a better way as compared to the previous models. So um, a basic like uh, background behind what is uh, happening be behind the curtains, how it is happening. So uh, this these transfer learning models are basically like uh, like we can say also these are trained on a fake task. So fake task means like the model initially the pre training of it, which uh, has been done by the Google and by the uh, by the like Facebook also. So what they did was they took uh, the model into uh, two kind of like uh, task. So the, one is pre-training, and then we if we apply it for our own purpose or if our if for our own customized purpose, then we do the fine tuning of it. So uh, the pre-training happens in two way. Uh, like one one of the task of pre-training is mass language modeling, and one of the task of it is next sentence prediction. So mass language modeling means like uh, we have we will give the sentence to the model and we will mask some of the words from the model and model has to predict what is that word and an another task is next sentence prediction. So like if uh, two sentence, the combination of two sentence are given whether a sentence comes before uh, B or B sentence uh, uh, comes after A like that. So the, these are the like a little bit description. I cannot cover whole in detail about how the pre-training is happening um, because we have the limited time and I have to cover a lot of things. So now let's come to the data set description. So the data set description, uh, actually this data set was collected from one of the real time challenge, which is like happening in real time, which is called BioAsk. So in that challenge what what uh, what uh, we uh, we are given is that we have to assign labels to the document and those labels are uh, collected from a, a repo called mesh mesh repo and the total number of labels possible till now is 29000 so uh, the set is 29000 and we have to select few of the labels from it and then we have to assign it to our document so they, then it becomes a multi label classification problem and uh, it is not a multi class classification problem and we have to like focus on this multi label classification problem set so uh, in multi class classification problem we have only one label per class like say for example we have a document we have to assign only one label then it will be a multi class classification problem but if it is like we have to assign a set of labels then it will become a multi label classification problem but but the original uh, like the data set description was given in such a way that we have to assign the labels from a very big set the chunk chunks of it so i have processed the data in such a way that it can be uh, like uh, applied in such a way that it becomes a multi label classification problem. So. Um, uh, the uh, the problem which I have worked on, so the total set uh, of data which was given like the raw data, the raw chunk of the data which was given to us was um, containing about 15 million articles, but uh, to do that we will be requiring a lot of uh, computation resources and lot of like time and so what i did was key i processed the data in my own way using my own knowledge and using my own expertise and i make this data a set of 15k collection and then i publish this data set uh, in the form uh, in, in my kaggle repo 
So I will show you uh, how if, if we, someone wants to work on the original data, Data set. I can. I will paste this link. Uh, so here we, we 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 can find the whole data set and how many number of articles are present and how uh, many number of labels per article. The average number of labels. All those information we can. If someone wants to work on the original data set, the core data set, they can have a look here. So uh, there are around twenty nine thousand uh, set of labels. Approx approximately 29,000 labels from that we have to assign 10 to 12 labels to the article. The main core challenge is that. So uh, this become this uh, originally what what this uh, the 29,000 labels what it is uh, making it is as an extreme multi label classification problem. So extreme multi label classification problem we can handle that by using the mesh ID which I have used here. So for example, if we have the word COVID-19, so COVID-19 has yes. the. Yes. Uh, is anyone speaking anything? Hello. Am I audible? Arvind? Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, continue. OK, go ahead, continue. Yeah. So oh, what happens key like if we have the uh, uh, word COVID-19 and like the label COVID-19 uh, which has to be assigned to the document. So uh, that has a mesh class or uh, uh, which is not noted as C0.748.2. Uh, 214 so uh, that has a like uh, hierarchical structure and we can we can directly map it to the C class which is which belong to disease and in in this way from uh, if uh, initially it was a extreme multi label classification problem but we solved this problem by uh, mapping it to the root level and then uh, we can like uh, trans like we can make uh, this problem in such a way that after this uh, root level solving it, this problem at depth one, we can solve it for depth two, we can solve it for depth three and depth four like that. I will show this thing, whole thing practically with the code. Uh, I should like uh, feel key, like uh, having a little bit description about the data set is very much important. So I am explaining it in a presentation way here. So <clears throat> while mapping the data set, uh, this is the like two, three uh, rows which I have printed here. In this, uh, if we can like say, for example, we have given the abstract text and the mesh majors are given. These these two, three, uh, these four columns are uh, given in the data set. And these all are, I have created it myself from, from B to Z like that. So uh, say, for example, we have, uh, we have this mesh root. So, uh, mesh root as D uh, 13.444.600.223.555. .5 so the root of it is D. OK, so uh, we have this chemical and drug label for it. And what will happen key? Uh, we will. Uh, what I have done here is that we I have created a one hot encoder label for it. OK, so. In in this way we will be able to solve this problem otherwise what will happen key model will not be able to like if we have the uh, 29000 classes present in the data set and if we will try to train the model it will take like lot of time lot of resources and working on it will be a very much like complex also and model to for model to learn uh, we will not be able to train the model this data set is also being published in my Kaggle repo uh, like in the data set this uh, section we can you can find this data set and like use it for your own purpose also. Now this is a flow diagram how I have processed the data and how I have uh, like obtained the scores and everything and like how uh, 
so for so in uh, as i told earlier ki in bio uh, task a uh, 2021 there there are 15 uh, million articles which were present in raw json format the whole dump of pubmed articles were provided to us okay and uh, the labels which were human curated labels were provided for those number of articles so what i did was first i have used ijson method to iterate through the data set and so the whole size of this data set is around 30 35 to 40 gb uh, approx 34 gb we can say 34 point some 34 point i think 6 gbs in size so like the processing of data set is so much complex that uh, working on it uh, if we will not be using this ijson iterative line read method we will not be able to like Uh, do it as a like we use we, we use normally. So after the, uh, getting the data set, uh, I converted it and then for uh, did some processing over the text. So text cleaning and all those things I have done, which we uh, do in the like all the NLP task. And after that, uh, I, I have converted it to the root label. so uh, the mapping to from its mesh major to mesh id all those things i have done and then i have uh, for the training purpose i have collected the 5 thou- uh, 50000 uh, articles uh, sub sampling with replacement uh, i have done and then uh, on top of that i have applied bert and biobert and elbert and all those kind of transfer uh, all those uh, pretrained models i have applied on top of that and then tune the model and then obtain the uh, performance metrics all those things so in the next slide if we can find the one of the like report which we are getting from the uh, model so uh, the flat uh, the f1 accuracy is uh, 83 and the flat accuracy is 14% so flat accuracy is 14% uh, it means that like say for example flat accuracy so all the labels which are assigned to the document has to be the in, in correct order then this flat accuracy will be higher so or say say for example we have like five labels so model has uh, predicted four labels uh, out of five labels correctly but what will happen ki if we will be calculating this flat accuracy then this will uh, be counted as false because all those five labels are not uh, uh, like assigned to the document in a correct order so those things so this is one of the like uh, report which i got from the data set so now let's move to the uh, practical implementation of it so how i have done that how i have trained it in kaggle environment in second my screen is visible na okay yeah so yeah we can see yeah okay so now now let's move uh, move to the uh, one second yeah so mm, now let's move to the coding section and then i will move to the uh, demonstration of it uh, so um, first i have what i have done is that i have installed all the packages which are being utilized in this notebook so transformer gradio and then this git lfs so this git lfs is required to push the code directly the model directly to this this environment so we can also select uh, instead of git lfs if someone is using uh, some other kind of repo we can use that to push the model directly from here uh, no need to like download the model train model and then upload it and do all those kind of complex uh, complex tasks so that's the reason like i have demonstrated uh, uh, this no- made this notebook in such a way that uh, this this is end to end like say for example from creating the data set from scratch to like uh, deploying the model here in this in this and i will show a demo also here and they, all this is in public domain so uh, one thing i want to, i i i also want to add here is that most of the people like uh, i see 
like they are using it, uh, but they are not using it efficiently. OK, so in, in Kaggle, what happens is we are we are currently given two GPUs, one GPU, all those kind of free resources. We can use it for our own and like do the real time development here directly. And uh, now now uh, I will tell okay, like uh, I have imported the libraries here, all the packages and all the libraries which I will be utilizing in this notebook and I feel that it is a good practice to import all the packages at the starting of the notebooks so that we don't have any dependency issue when we are training or when we are working on the uh, when we are training the model or when we are deploying it like that. So the, the current uh, GPU is. Uh, one second P100 is it is. So. Yeah, so <clears throat> what is happening here is that uh, I'm using the torch version 1.11.0. After that, uh, uh, checking it for like the confirmation key, what is the GPU I am assigned it and what is the ID of it? And uh, after that, uh, the name is Tesla P116 GB. So the RAM uh, of this GPU is 16 GB. After that, uh, yeah, one thing I forgot to tell you that I have also connected this whole notebook in a uh, with weight and biases so that we can track down all the uh, like so say for example if we are using all those different kind of uh, uh, pre-trained model models so we will not be able to uh, like do that tracking here directly in the notebook and it will become very very challenging if we will not be using this weight and biases which I have used in this notebook. So this way uh, this all the uh, like metrics I have reported here in the weight and biases so that anyone can and this is all in public domain so anyone can like look at the performance and how uh, how it is happening and for this uh, I have also used this uh, user secret, which is a Kaggle like utility we can use. So if we will go into add on section and we will go into secret section, we can find it here. So I have used this Kaggle to push the code into hugging face and to weight and biases. So this is uh, the loading of it like uh, uh, for for logging logging the weights and the, for logging the weights into weight and biases i have used here this way this part of code if anyone has any doubt they can ask in 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 the in the like in in between they can ask okay so after that uh, like reading the data set and uh, uh, because I have converted this whole data set uh, in a simpler format and I have uploaded that data set in the uh, Kaggle itself. So so that like if someone else is working on it, they don't have any issue. So if we will go, go into Kaggle and my my data set sections, you will find the data here. One second, there are a lot of. The data set has been uploaded here as well. OK. Now let's move to like the code. So the total number of articles uh, which I'm using here is 50,000 here. And uh, the average length of the article is 192 tokens and standard deviation is 76. After this, uh, I am like uh, extracting the columns like the labels uh, which which are assigned to the document in in a uh, and uh, calculating the uh, number of labels so total number of labels are 14 here this is the uh, like a small description of the data set again how the mapping has been happened and how i have like map it to the root level from from this bipolar disorder to its root OK, so now I have created this DF count. So this DF count actually like 
uh, give some more statics about the data set because uh, I what wh why I have done all these uh, things is because if we are having like say for example class imbalance problem in multi label classification data set format. So how do we handle those? So if we will not be utilize visualizing the data set in a proper order we will not be able to like say the model will be having like very bad performance or something like those kind of issues will come so i have written the code in such a way that we can do the visualization and everything here and like check the performance of it so let's say <coughs> the labels are from a to z so a label has around 23000 articles and like all those so yes after this i have uh, split the data set into train test pit and uh, 40000 as training and 10000 in testing after this from from the labels the mesh labels i have created this one hot labels for the uh, articles after this uh, yes stored it in in a variable labels and article train after this uh, what i have done is that uh, like here i have not uh, removed the like say for example if we have to use but so uh, and bio but those kind of weights so uh, if we are using the bird architecture then we can uh, do the uh, tokenizer as bird tokenizer and uh, so I have not removed it. So if anyone else want to like util you use Roberta tokenizer, they can comment the bird tokenizer and use the Roberta tokenizer. And after that, uh, calculated the input IDs. So this article train which I have uh, uh, like loaded here, I am using it to uh, encode it because like in BERT uh, we we will be requiring because BERT is trained on the fake task so we will be requiring the data set to like transform it in such a way that we can enter it into the BERT architecture itself so all those kind of pre-processing I am doing it here so this is I am calculating the uh, in indices with one label instance so what was happening was no, what was happening key when we are training the data set the train test split is not happening in proper order so so the uh, to do that i have done uh, uh, calculated this free one frequency indexes for all the labels after this uh, from from the Tra training data set I have split it into train input validation input train label validation labels and then the mask for it. And uh, after that converted it into torch uh, uh, in torch so that uh, we can use this to like train the model and validate the model itself. After this. Uh, what I'm doing is that uh, I am like loading the data in the variable and creating the batch size as 64 here and also saving it in so that we can get it in output these data loaders. These are very important. And then now comes the model loading. So uh, in from hugging phase, I am selecting this BioBud case 1.2 from DMIS lab. So uh, the model will be loaded here and uh, pushing it to the CUDA and then um, model has been pushed to CUDA. Yeah. After that, uh, what I'm doing is that I'm using the uh, optimizer like uh, I'm, um, like not using it, like uh, displaying it or we can say executing it. So for 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 model to have the training in proper order, we have I have select this weight decay rate and uh, these params and like so that the fine tuning of it, it, it will be in a better order. I will not be explaining more about how it is happening and what are the internals of it because of the time constraint. After this, uh, 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 initializing the Adam weight optimizer, 
and uh, all the parameters which I have initialized here will be passed into it and the learning rate has been set to um, 6e minus 6. OK, now comes the in core training of it. Uh, the Chrome uh, training part of it. I think we are only left with 20 minutes, Narvin. Uh, should be <laughs> going. Yeah, right. OK, so. Uh, this is this this is the code for the training loop. So for all of the epochs, uh, what I'm doing is that uh, I am passing it to the data for each of the data loader. I am passing uh, in, in initializing the batch from it and then passing those batches into the model. So this so I have written the code in such a way that all the comment section and everything is in proper order. So if anyone has any issue, they can comment it down later and I will clarify it externally. So after this uh, training of it uh, in the similar like for the validation purpose, I'm iterating it in the same way on the validation data loader uh, to like iterate over the validation data set and then check the performance of it. After this, what I'm doing is that I'm like side by side calculating the validation accuracy and flat validation accuracy, which which we can get to know while training model. How many score is it going up? Is it going down like that? Say for example, here it is 82 and then after first epoch it went 86, then it went 88, 87 like that. And side by side, what will happen? Key like those will be logged into this weight and biases. So uh, I have talked about it earlier. Key we can use this in such a way that this code has been written in such a way that it will automatically log the uh, performance into weight and biases directly. So after this, mm, visualizing the results here, the loss and the uh, flat of uh, f1 validation accuracy and the flat f1 flat validation accuracy after this uh, yeah once we once we it, these all thing will happen we will set the model into eval mode and uh, we will check the performance of it so that we can use it to generate the classification report which I have shown earlier. So we can like get to know what is the support like support means like how many articles are present for that particular label. So for each of the label, what is the support? So say for example, the support for L is a little bit lower because what was happening key near the problem. The data set is like not getting you know, like that many support for it. So the training, the validation is not in that order. After that, I'm generating this in classification report. Now comes the. Now, now we have trained the model, so now what we not now what to do with that? So uh, I have uh, like um, demonstrated here how I have like uh, converted uh, this whole thing into a real time application so that it can be utilized by someone else or if someone wants to make a similar kind of application on a slightly different data set, they can do that. So all the code regarding the Gradio implementation of it has been logged here. So uh, here what I'm doing is that I'm pushing the mm, model directly to uh, this my repo. This was 9654 and multi level classification for permit articles so that it can be automatically uh, this whole pipeline will be like we can directly test it in real time also. And uh, similarly like model we are pushing the tokenizer for it into into the repo. Now this is a small function which I have written so that uh, I can also demonstrate a gradio application here also. So what basically I did key after creating the grade application in the notebook, I like transferred the whole code into uh, into the hugging face. One second. Here. Now comes the. Yeah, now. Now comes like uh, I will show like say for example from a live 
PubMed uh, website, uh, I will pick a article from PubMed Central or like we can say from any kind of uh, article we can pick and we can like uh, use it for our own purpose. And what I will do is that I will search for one, one article here. 2023. We all know okay, in China the COVID is all coming again. So let's say this article has been published in 2023 only. So if we will uh, we will select the text, the abstract of it. I am not able to copy it. Let's search into Google Scholar. So from this, I will select this many text from the real like this article has been published I think recently in 2023 only. Okay, January 2023. So like we can have a real time like demo here. Now we will I will submit it. So I have created this Gradio application and like what it will do, do the uh, the labels for it it belongs to it will return those. And yeah, that's that's my talk. I think it it might be helpful. Yes, if anyone has any question, please ask them. So it is a multi label classification problem. And I remember in the labels you have shown it there was a hierarchy. So prediction doesn't give the hierarchy, is it? It only gives the highest uh, root prediction. label. Yeah, root label. But uh, but what happens key like at the second level we have one one seven. Like say for example, it at root level we have sixteen label, and from those sixteen labels we have to do the multi label classification of it. Then at the second level of it. So let me tell open the data set. I have opened it somewhere. Yeah, so uh, this this root level, this depth one has 16 different categories. Then at yeah. depth, two, this is 1116. Then at depth three, it is like 1000 something like that. And depth mm -hmm. four, like it is 10,000. So, so it will go till 29,000 like that. Mm -hmm. So this is an extreme multi label classification problem. The challenge uh, like the data set has been labeled in such a way that this becomes an extreme multi label classification problem. But I have mapped it to the root level so that it can be solved in a like easier way and the like it will be a, a like uh, it we, we can solve it using a multi label classification problem as a multi label classification problem. So the objective itself is to predict the root level classification. Yes, but uh, uh, okay. Okay, and and the thing is key like if someone wants to do at depth two, they can do at depth two also like but they have to do the mapping and the mapping right now i have done it for the root level the data set and the data set which i have published here is done at the root level but what they had to do is that they had to download this whole data uh, 24 gb text format and then they have to map it and then they have to convert it into uh, like for mapping it for the first level they had okay. to do it on their own Okay, yes. and all the transformers which you used is going to give you the vector for the word representation. Not vector, it will use vectors to do assign the labels. Uh, it will not do give the vectors for it. It will use those uh, predefined vectors and assign the labels uh, to it. So vectors are features in this case. You took the direct vectors and uh, you, pre you predicted it. You did not do any feature engineering beyond that. No, like basic text pre-processing and uh, that those things I have done while preparing the data set. 
okay. after the data set has been prepared label has been created after that what i have done that i have used it to uh, like then converted it uh, like say for example if i'm using biobot so the embeddings for biobot has been generated and in internally and then uh, like do it the classification the multi level oh. classification problem on that okay okay got it thanks good yeah, project it, yes it, it 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 has a lot of scope because say like say for example if you, this transfer learning uh, we can like what happens key what happened why why how i have started this problem i will tell you a brief history so like uh, why i while i was working in nlp lab uh, under dr aditi sharan while i was in jnu so there uh, like in from the biotech department we were having like uh, there was a faculty called in the ghosh so what was happening ki Mm, they were facing this uh, this kind of problem in real time and that's why uh, this bio ask and all those kind of competition creates a data set in such a way that it can the model and everything has to be like real time applicable so i have tried to solve this in my own way but it has a lot of scope and like lot of research and lot of like training and lot of every, like mm, doing it in a proper order has to be done and there is okay. a lot of scope frankly what is the yes. criteria that your book is your notebook is chosen so actually mm, see see uh, in this uh, uh, i have uh, created the data set i have trained the model and then in the same notebook i have submitted uh, the notebook into kaggle ml research spotlight kaggle ml research number so there it got selected and then after that mm, i got the award so mm, one thing i forgot to tell you all is that i published a research paper on this same topic okay okay because you published the research uh, and you submitted the notebook your notebook got selected is that yes yes okay okay, okay. yes so uh, but this uh, this research paper i can, this is like not the free and open source so if anyone has to read the research paper it is okay. very very like in depth i have written everything so but they had to pay some price here okay okay for this good 